Okay, let's do a little spin. Mate, it feels like it's gonna be close. G'day, Stuart from, Stuart, Stu from UAV Futures here. Welcome, I don't know what's going on, why I'd say it like that. Stu from UAV Futures here, and welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday, where every Tuesday we get together, we talk about some new, exciting, or just different technology in the FPV drone racing world. And today, well, what we're checking out is this module here from GE FPV. It's pretty much like a diversity module with a bit of a forge mixed in, designed to put in your fat shark goggles, take out to the field, get some good reception. Well, that's the plan. And Anyway, because it's a really important part. If you spend a lot of money on some pair of fat sharks, you want to get the best reception possible. And in the past, even though people don't like it, I've kind of found that most of the stuff, it relatively performs very, very similar. So all the stuff based on the 5808 module, whatever that RX is, seems to perform fairly well. Whether it goes, you know, seems to perform fairly similar. And even things like in the Omway Sky Zones, or these bad boys, the LaForges, the Furious modules, all that sort of stuff, the Asian cheat modules, I'm just going to call it now, perform and kind of do the same stuff. Surprise, surprise, despite what other people will lead you to believe, I feel like they all kind of do the same stuff. But that doesn't mean that this one might or might not do something different. So what we're going to do, we're going to stick it on the bench, I'll show you its features, and then the part I'm excited about, we'll take it out to the field, find out is this going to be the right module for you, is it going to make a difference, and if it doesn't make a difference and it's about the same as all the others, how does it come in a price point? So how do you think it's a bit of a cheaper option? But let's stick it on the bench, get started with this Tech Tuesday, and find out is this going to be a good module for you and take it out and have some fun in three two one module alrighty here it is on the bench the GE FPV 5808 module and uh, there's look this part's gonna be pretty quick because the main part I want to get out to the field fly it around and find out is this gonna work and I do want to say it does look pretty cool off the bat so what we're gonna do we're gonna plug it in it's designed for your fat shark so let's plug it in right here and something you're gonna notice straight away is just how easily it fits uh, it fits in there so once you line up your pins I've got to admit that is some of the best fit you saw how nicely that sort of snapped in there That's one of the best fitting shells I've ever seen usually you've got to force them and stress them all that sort of stuff at least in my version It fits very very nicely Alrighty, now what we're going to do, let's plug it in, show you the magic, and then take it out the field, fly it around. You can see coming up with the LaForge and some different logos on the front there. I do like these three buttons. I think that's much better than the old rocker wheel that a lot of people used to have. Is that in focus? Let me see if I can just focus this a bit better for you guys. Alrighty, so hopefully that's coming through a little bit more. I really like these buttons, I should say. So on here, it is so easy to cycle through all your channels. And I know for Cal, often he'll say, because he wears reading glasses, and he'll ask me to double check his channel on his goggles. It's a little bit difficult to see. But with this, I love how the display is showing up here, a huge display for you to read. So I really, really like that feature. The buttons on the inside don't actually do anything, which is a little bit of a shame. So you do need to use the buttons on the outside. It's very responsive, but let's go through some of the settings. So you can either set your channels, you know, which is you just saw me doing, and that, I should say that's very easy to do. You just cycle through your channels like this by pressing up or down. And if you wanna go through a different band, just hold down the button just for that extra second longer. So very, very easy to do. You know, if Cal's like, hey, Stuart, can you fly around on F2? No dramas, very, very easy to lock to your channel. If you're going to the races and you need to change some stuff, this is gonna make it very, very easy. Now, some of the other settings we're gonna go through, or some of the other features, I should say. Uh, we've got our RF analyzer, which we'll just go through. I don't have anything plugged in at the moment, but you can imagine if I did, you'd see some stuff come up. The quad finder, which we will be testing in the field. So that's sort of where it goes through and lets you know what, you know, how close you are. Are you getting further, like a bit of a hotter or colder thing? We're gonna test that out. And then uh, we've got spectate mode, which jumps to the closest one, band scan. If you you want to find out who else is flying your favorite channels and your frequency as well so i really like this part you can adjust your frequency almost on the individual part if you want to get it if you've got something that's tuned a little bit more i think that's a nice little extra feature to have and then also something if we go into the settings you've got a fair few things so the one that was interesting you can calibrate your rsi but if you turn you can turn a low band on or off so that means if you wanted to, and I'm saying, I'm not saying break the law, follow all laws in your country. If you wanted to, uh, let's go on our frequency here. So you can see we've hit the bottom of the band, but if you hold it down even more, 
and you had a quad flying around on this, you can fly on a very, very low frequency. So if you were somewhere where maybe there was some interference and it was legal wherever you were, you can fly around on low, you have the option to fly around on low band, but follow all laws and regulations. But that's it on the bench, I guess. Oh, I should also mention too, it does come with these two little right angle, oh sorry, one right angle connector, 145, so you can put your patch on and your Omni, but that's it in the goggles. What we really need to do, let's take it out to the field, fly it around and give you some impressions and find out, is it a good module, how does the rangefinder work, and what's it actually perform like, and is it worth getting? All right, so let's jump out to the field, fly it around for Tech Tuesday, and find out how the GEFPV module works in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field, pretty excited, let's do it. We're gonna be checking out the GEFPV module, whatever it is, it's linked down below. It's fitted nicely into my fat sharks, and something I didn't realize till I was out here in the sun, we've got some glorious weather, it's actually kind of a purpley color, so I actually thought it was red on the bench. But anyway, turns out it's a bit more purple than I was expecting. What we'll do, we'll fly it around. I'll give you my impressions, I guess, in the DVR that you're going to see. So we'll show you some DVR, how it records. You've already seen what its features are like. And then we'll also hand it over to Grumpy, not Grumpy Trev, because he's not here. He's the bowling master. We'll hand it over to CTC, who's here behind the camera. And uh, we'll get his impressions as well on, I guess, what he likes about the features and how it interacts and the things that it does and how quick it is, the size of the screen, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, Anyway, let's get to it, roll some DVR and show you how the G, F, B, V, F, whatever. Let's show you how the module goes. Okie dokie, on board with some DVR recorded straight to the module. And uh, you guys haven't seen this drone yet. Stay tuned. It is coming. Bit of a secret project. But uh, we have nicknamed this the Meaty Boy. So that's what I'm flying around. Really, really liking it. Can't wait to show you this. But regarding the module itself, I'm going to say the DVR records fine. It's actually probably a little bit better than I'm used to. But overall, the reception in my everyday sort of track flying that I do is like I was expecting, it's about the same. And I find that no matter what sort of module you put into your fat sharks, most of them do the same stuff, except those new fancy dangled ones like the uh, the clear view modules or the rapid fires, what I've seen from the videos online, they actually seem to do some secret magic source, some special locks and stuff in there, but they also cost an arm and a leg. So this is just a standard 5808 receiver and it does about as good as you'd expect. So it's very, very similar to all the others, very, very comparable, comparable but I found it to be a very reliable module i've used it quite a lot since and yeah it, i think for the bang for the buck it definitely does a good job and i'm sure you guys will agree watching this back as well and i'm also going to put like a little coupon code link down below and i think you get like 10 percent, or maybe i'll flash it on screen you get like an extra 10 percent off so if you've got yourself a pair of fat sharks you want a module and we are going to check out the drone finder in a minute and you might actually be scratching your head at just what the results are like because i've never seen a drone finder work like this so i can't wait to show you that in a little bit after we hand it over to cal but yeah overall uh uh, I think bang for the buck, especially if you use that discount code, it's definitely a, a great module that I am I just think does a good job. I don't know how much more I can say. It's a great module. It does well. And uh, now let's hand it over to Cal and see what he thinks. DTC, I just want to get your quick impressions on the GE FPV module. I took out my um, bigger antenna, the patch antenna, so you could see it better uh -huh. and, and talk about it. But what do you reckon? Well, first impression, just going by the look of it, it looks really nice. And it's got one of the nicest kind of cases that I've seen of, of any of these modules. Uh, the nice purple one, it seems to be a perfect fit. You've got nice accessible buttons. It looks great. The display looks great. Oh, that's low battery because we've had it on all day. <laughs> so I can't do anything about that, I guess. No. Perfect timing. Let's get another battery. My first impressions are it looks nice. It fits really well. And if it's anything like some of the uh, other modules that I've personally used that I've got from places like Banggoods, I've had nothing but good luck with these things and they've been great so i'm expecting that you know this will uh do great things as well i want to know what do you think about the three buttons first the the rocker switch on there uh obviously the the buttons are a little bit easier i think the rocker switch it's a bit fiddly you have to think about what you're doing and often you're going in the wrong direction and all of this with this is, is a bit more logical a bit easier to use i'd say and this happens a lot where you ask me to check what channel you're on right when you don't have your reading glasses on That's your right. current module i'm noticing that everything on this display is much bigger much more bolder and brighter and easy for me to see without reading glasses so that's definitely a plus yeah from my perspective yeah all right should we uh test it around with a little quad finder do you think that feature is going to work apparently it's meant to pick it up and let you know if you're going hotter or colder or anything like that uh in theory it should 
It right. should uh, give you some. I don't know. I don't think you'll be able to pinpoint things with it, but I think it'll get you in the general okay. vicinity. All right. I'm going to ask you to go hide my quad. I'll keep my eyes closed, and um, then we'll see if we can find it. All right. All right. That's nice. This little baby hawk. I'm going to go and hide it and see how good this drone finder in this module actually is. Now, I don't expect it to have any kind of pinpointing abilities, but I think it might actually point you in the right direction. And this is something I've done earlier before when I lost a quad in the early days, and I had a very narrow band patch antenna, which allowed me to find a quad that was still powered but lost to me. So uh, it's very much the same principle here. Hopefully it'll do a better job than, than uh, the method that I used, even though it did work. But let's just see how good it does. Let's just see how good it goes. Um, there's a good posse. I don't want to make it too easy. And I don't want to make it too hard. So I'm going to actually put it in a tree. I'm going to hang it up here. You can still get some decent signal. And let's see what this uh, module can do. If it can effectively find uh, a lost drone, well, that's a great little feature to have for sure. <laughs> All right. All right. Baby Hawk is lost to us now. Now, just from knowing Cal, I know you sort of started off in a direction over there and you've come back from over there. So I don't know if you're trying to psych me out and you think it started there or ended there, but that's what we're going to find out. So I might get you to do the camera work. And I'm going to put a patch antenna on here. Go to F2. Oh, I hope it was on F2. I think it was. We'll find out. I'm not getting anything. Quad finder. Oh, we're getting some. Okay. It's down around the zeros over here. Turning, turning, we get... Oh, uh, it's saying pretty much this way. So uh, let's, let's follow this. It's getting stronger. I wonder if it'd be interesting if it's high or low as well, if it's on ground level, if you did it in a tree. Okay, we're jumping right up to around the 60%, it's sort of going back and forth, but okay, let's try a little bit here. 50, 60, 70, 80, 60, 50, 60. So oh, it's all 60 here. Oh, it's it's liking, seems to like it over this way. And oh, seventy-eight. Oh, eighty. What this would be probably even better with a really narrow beam um, antenna. Well, okay, we're maxing out. We're going towards ninety. We're on a hundred percent. Okay, now that's not helping too much. We're hitting a hundred. What about if I take the antenna off? No, nah, that probably. And you get that directional effect. Right? No. Okay, because we're hitting we're hitting a hundred over here. Okay, let's do a little spin. Mate, it feels like it's gonna be close. Cause I'm get it's sort of all over the shop. It must be close. Is it? Oh, let me just keep going until it... Oh, that's good. Jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. It's hard to explain what's happening, but there's a little bar going back and forth. Solid. So this is solid. It's not in your pocket, is it? You're not messing with me? Okay. It's...
Okay, I feel like it's in here. To be fair, if you crashed it, you would know if it was in a tree, right? Uh, yeah, yep. And given the fact that we're just walking around one tree here, what does that kind of point to? <laughs> it's probably in the tree. All right, well, now you've said that, that's tipped me off. I don't, that means, you'd probably, this is a tool to use, it's not perfectly scientific, but if what you're telling me, if it is but around if, here. If you were the pilot and you'd known you'd crashed into a tree, you would have walked over here and realized this was the tree. So would have, you would have found you'd, it. You'd, you'd use, is it in here somewhere? Uh, you can't say to me. Well, well it's, like I said, it's not going to have pinpointing ability, but it's going to put you in the vicinity. And it did a good job at that. Where, oh, <laughs> it's right here. Right there, where I put it. Okay. So, you know what, that I feel like, Look, yeah, we had to walk around this tree a few times and it's not going to locate it for you no matter what, 100%. But you're right, it did do a good job and it is a tool to use in your arsenal. If you're going out and you don't know where your drone is, at least it's gonna, it's better than nothing and it is going to help and it's a nice feature that, that is built in. So, I don't know, are you impressed that we were able to do yeah. that with just bouncing on this? Especially yeah, it you did and a, you, we, it did a better job than I thought it was going to do. So, I, I didn't expect it to pinpoint, but it, it got you right to the right vicinity and within um, about two meters and, and walking around the tree that it was in so and, come on and it was kind of interesting too when i when i got to here and then i was like oh no now it's saying this way and that's when i turned i was like is it in your pocket because i was so i was two meters away from it mm. it was getting given off that reading so it works yeah that's that's pretty cool worked yeah. better than i thought i like it Alrighty, so there it is. There's my review with the GE FPV -E mod. I'm getting confused. GE FPV module. I'm going to link it down below. And overall, look, I, I think there's some parts I'm impressed with, and then just some parts are like, yep, that's just another receiver module. And that, when it comes to the actual video and the vision we were getting in FPV, that's what it's all about. It's all about having that clear FPV vision, and the better you can see, the better you can fly, the less mistakes, less crashes you're going to have. This, it was about the same as any others that I sort of review out there, any others that I've tested. doesn't matter if they're built in into things like the Onways, the Sky Zones, or if they're just one of your standard Fat Shark modules, e Sheen, Furious, LaForge, all that sort of stuff. And the companies won't like me saying this, but uh, I feel like it's all very much for muchness. So in that regard, it is just, be, I think, just get the one that's worth the bang for the buck. But what I did like about this one, and I've got to say, it was super responsive. I love how big the screen is, and I can't believe I'm saying this. That gimmick, that drone finder that I thought was going to be useless, I'm sure you can agree. Put your comments down below. Did you think it was going to work that well? Like, you know, Cal went off chasing it down and trying to find out where he put it. It's not going to be the be-all and end-all to help you locate, locate your craft, but I was still very, very impressed. It's another tool at your disposal. You know, you might have some extra buzzers on there. You might have a GPS finder, but now you, it's just an extra part. And if, if that helps you find your drone, you might have an expensive drone out there. I think that's well worth it. So I've got to take my hat off when it came to that, that part. I was actually really impressed with the drone finder thing. I didn't think it was going to work anywhere near as well as it actually did. But what do you guys think? Oh, I should also say too, I should also say too, yeah, that was hard to say that 10 times quick, but also I have found that it's becoming a bit loose. The more I've thrown it in my backpack, maybe I need to put it in a case, take it a little bit better, but it is getting easier to pop in and out. So that snug fit we had at the start, I don't know if it's just mine, but uh, it's becoming a little bit loose every now and again. Anyway, what do you guys think? Drop your comments down below subscribe for more fpv related content and as always happy flying happy finding yeah happy flying